Yes, we're recording. Cool, cool, cool. We are ready. Jeez Louise, this light in here is scorching. What's up and welcome back to my channel. I'm Diana, creator of Money Boss Mama. And in this video, we are going to be talking all about emergency funds. You might see a lot of people talking about how important it is to have an emergency fund, even arguing about how much you should have in your emergency fund. So I just wanna talk about it from my perspective, as well as giving you guys some tips on how to calculate how much you should have in your emergency fund and how to make it work with your debt-free journey. So if you are interested in emergency funds, you don't have one quite set up yet, then keep watching. All right, first thing, you know, we have to start with a good definition. What is an emergency fund? This is a fund that is specifically for emergencies. So exactly as it sounds, a fund for emergencies. Now, what you deem to be an emergency may be different from the next person. Like it's not black and white and it's not set in stone. I've seen a few articles that say that, you know, a car is not an emergency as far as like car repairs or anything like that but the way i see it is car repairs are an emergency so obviously me and this other person have different perspectives because i feel like if your car breaks down how are you getting to work how are your kids getting to school if you can't get your kids to school and you can't work then obviously you're not bringing in an income so to me, that is an emergency. But however you see an emergency, that's gonna be what this fund is for. And yes, you're gonna to have to have a lot of discipline to not dip into this emergency fund. You kind of treat it as though it doesn't really exist. So kind of out of sight, out of mind. And then if something pops up, like you um, have unexpected medical services that you are needing, or a comet comes and crashes through your home, then you have the peace of mind of knowing that you have this money set aside. So just as I kind of left off, the benefits of an emergency fund are that number one, it keeps you from going into more debt. The whole purpose is to protect you, to give you a safety net to kind of fall into if something unexpected pops up. We all know as long as we are breathing, something unexpected is going to happen. Life is unpredictable and it just kind of gives you more control over those unpredictable moments because you have money set aside to help you should crap start going you know left field and this is especially important for those of you who are on a financial journey maybe you're trying to save up for a down payment or you are trying to pay off all of your debt it is important for you to have something to fall back on because you do not want to make progress on your journey and then life slaps you upside of the head and you have to go in more debt or you have to take from the progress that you've already made. So it's like you're taking 10 steps forward and then 20 steps back. It's a way to preserve the progress that you have made on your journey because you don't have to disrupt what you've already created over here when something happens and you have to deal with that. Now, when it comes to how much you actually need in your emergency fund, this is the part where people tend to take out their boxing gloves. And it's just, I feel like it's just one of those things where everyone thinks they're right or certain people think that they are right and that their way is the only way. My perspective on it is it's going to be different for everyone. We have these standard guidelines. You know, you should have at least a thousand dollars in your emergency fund. You should have at least three to six months, eight months. I know it's a lot of information out there, but when I actually started my debt free journey, I only had like four or five hundred dollars saved up. And that's because I had different factors that played a role into that decision. Number one was I was low income. And I think when we are saying that you should have three to six months worth of living expenses and someone's low income, they can barely save like $50 a month. It's not irresponsible, but it's not taking into consideration that it may take them a while. 
to get to three to six months worth of living expenses. So if you have this crippling anxiety about your financial situation and you just want to get started and make some type of progress to make yourself feel better, but someone's telling you that you need to save three to six months worth of living expenses first before you can even start on this goal, then that may discourage someone from even embarking on a financial journey because if they can only save about $50, $50 to $100 a month, but there it would take them to get to like, what, $5,000 to get to three to six months worth of living expenses. That may discourage them from even trying because they feel like it's going to take too long what is the point if I have to sit here and wait XYZ amount of months or even a year before I can get to my goal? And that was kind of how my mindset was at the beginning of my debt free journey. I'm like, I am struggling. I am low income. These people are saying I need to have at least three to six months worth of living expenses. But this debt is kicking my butt. I want it gone. It's making me uncomfortable. I'm going to start on my debt first. I need to go after this debt because I need to feel some type of relief. And so I started with $400. Now, mind you, certain factors are going to play a role in how much you need to save. Such as, do you anticipate needing any future car repairs? Car repairs and home repairs seem to be the two biggest things that take a person out. I felt okay with just $400 because I had a new car. My car was fairly new, therefore I wasn't anticipating any future repairs that were going to be needed for a while besides oil changes and some new tires. That was it. I also, I was a renter. I did not have a mortgage. I did not own a home. So if anything happened to wherever I was renting, then I could just call up the maintenance man and then they would come and fix it for me. And I also felt okay just starting with $400 because my expenses were super low. I lived in a low income apartment at the time. I want to say my expenses were probably like $1,000 a month, if that much, it was probably less than $1,000. The highest expense that I had in my budget was my auto loan and that was about $4.95 at the time. Yeah, it was about $4.95 at the time before I refinanced it. And then it dropped down to $350. So needless to say, my expenses were not super high. I did not anticipate anything, uh, any big major expense that was probably going to be needed because I had a new car and I did not own a home. So those are two things you want to take into consideration when you're trying to determine, you know, how much you want to put into your emergency fund. Are you a homeowner? Do you have an old car and you're going to anticipate needing some repairs in the next year or two? You know, what expenses do you have in your budget that are pretty large? And what could go wrong with these expenses or these things that you owe? And from there, take into consideration, do I need to put more in savings because of these things? Or am I okay to start with what I have? Now when it comes to calculating exactly how much your target amount should be in your emergency fund, you need to know what your expenses are. So if you determine that you know, you're okay with just one month's worth of living expenses or half of one month's worth of living expenses, or maybe you're going to go up to six to eight months of living expenses, the common denominator here is the month of expenses. So list out all of your monthly expenses, how much everything is, and then from that amount, you can calculate it by however many months that you are needing. And now with me, the way my emergency fund is set up, I have it at $10,000 and that is about six to eight months worth of my living expenses bare bones budget. I do not have beauty in there. I do not have working out in there. So if I am needing to access my emergency fund, it is truly an emergency and these things are not essential. So you want to include just your essential expenses. Anything that's extra is obviously going to have to go because you are in a state of emergency. So from your list of essential expenses, times that by however many months you want to have saved up, and then that's gonna be your target amount. 
So for my ladies who do not yet have an emergency fund, but whatever it is that is happening in your current financial state is really making you anxious, it's messing with your self-esteem and your confidence, and you just want to see some type of progress happening to help you stick with this journey, then you can do whatever you need to do for that goal and save for your emergency fund at the same time. This is what I did. Yes, I only started with like $400 at the beginning of my debt free journey, but I was still setting back like $10, $20 into my quote unquote emergency fund. So yes, I was contributing to my savings and paying off debt at the same time. This way I knew that I was helping to build up my safety net but I was also getting my little fix because I was seeing progress being made on my debts. And I really do believe that this helped me to stay consistent and it fueled the fire, like it put that fire in my belly to continue going. Because if I would have just had to sit and watch these debts grow because of interest while I put money away in a savings account, considering how much money I had to work with, which was not much, I think that I would not have been able to get to where I am today because I, I would have quit. It would have discouraged me so bad because I was so anxious looking at my debts and to know that I couldn't do anything about it besides send the minimum payment to them, that was not going to work for me. Yes, I know a lot of content creators do um, tend to emphasize the importance of this. But I am someone where, what do we need to do to keep you motivated? What do we need to do so we're making some type of progress? And you have to allow yourself to know that you know what's best for you. You know what's best for you and you don't have to do it the normal way. You don't have to do it the way that everyone else says that you have to do it. Be a rebel like me. You can do both because either way it goes, whether you are going to pause on your goal to save up your emergency fund, whether you are going to put a little bit here to your emergency fund and then put a little bit here to your goals, you're still progressing you're still doing something that is elevating you financially. It is okay. But hopefully this gave you guys a new perspective on emergency funds and I hope that I was able to free some of you to make that financial decision that you were worried about. You don't need outside validation. I say it all the time, like you know what's best for you financially. You just won't accept that you know what's best for you financially because of your past financial decisions. Do not shackle yourself to what you've done in the past. You are able to transform into a new woman. You are actively working on improving your finances. And so you're going to have to trust yourself. You need to trust yourself in that process. So let this be step one in trusting yourself. But I will catch you guys in the next one.